All right. Ah. Uh, Ow, oh, ow, oh, ow, oh, what are you gonna do? Ow, oh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Ow, oh, oh, no, okay, no, yeah, no, this, this spray is not for me. Yeah, the other thing I thought was really compelling about the satellites is you talk about just go on Google and do an image search for satellites. A lot of the stuff you see is gonna look pretty archaic considering modern technology because they've been using the same model for so long. Almost everything, well, uh, uh, if this model is to be true, it would have to be everything. But everything you see looks CGI or it looks like a little uh, computer graphic of a satellite. Where are the pictures of Earth with 20,000 satellites orbiting it, orbiting it? If we have an International Space Station, can't you get a photograph that has all these little dots that should look like lice all around the, the Earth's outer atmosphere? You cannot see any satellites and ISS pictures because satellites are incredibly small when compared to the Earth. Any satellites that appear in pictures of Earth would be smaller than a pixel, or basically invisible. If the highest resolution picture ever taken was taken from the ISS, any satellite caught in the image would be around 20 pixels, or about the resolution of a NES character. It is completely reasonable not see satellites and pictures of Earth from space. That's one issue, but also the temperature. They tell us the thermosphere is 2,000 degrees Celsius. Well, what metal is going to be able to withstand that kind of heat? What computer can can survive in that environment? Yeah, that's right. Those are two more good points for why satellites... Well, we shouldn't just assume that these things exist just because people say they do. Uh, you know, if you want to... If you want to be scientific and you want to be a, a real skeptic, uh, you want to be cr a critical thinker. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Then you should only accept things that you can verify with your senses and with evidence yourself. But hey, I'm just a normal kid, like you, except that I ask questions. And because I'm brave enough to ask questions, I come under scrutinies. So, you know, people think it's crazy to believe that satellites don't exist. But really, it's crazy to believe that satellites do exist when you have no evidence and can never verify it for yourself. I see Eric never bothered to verify for himself how long distance communication works in the modern world. I guess it doesn't happen then. Just like these space programs and space telescopes and all these other things that we will never confirm, as far as we know, if I go up on a plane and I jump out, I'm coming back to Earth. Doesn't matter how high I go, I'm not going to start floating at some point like they claim happens. I have a list of 536 people that would beg to differ with you on that point, Eric. Sadly, they are Masonic Jew lizards, so the testimonial is obviously not trustworthy. Brilliant! Um, and has to happen if there are satellites out there. But as you said, if you look at the pictures of satellites and the pictures that these satellites are supposedly taking, they're all CGI. The satellite itself is fake. The, the uh, pictures of the Earth look like cartoons. Um, they, they claim almost all of them are composites, which is their word. Uh, they say that they receive ribbons of imagery from satellites, which is their term they use to uh, tell us, you know, why we don't just get a friggin' photograph. So they say we get ribbons of imagery and then they have to splice the ribbons of imagery together in Photoshop. So they even claim, uh, they even admit, uh, NASA workers themselves have admitted that they have to use Photoshop uh, on the satellite images. It's just how the data is received. And so, you know, you know, that's how it is, man. <laughs> yeah. Poor Rob Simmons. Little did he know he would become the inadvertent poster child of the Flat Earth community. I am baffled how an interview about the routineness of compositing an Earth image has somehow exploded into an earth-shattering revelation. What about, say, longitude and latitude navigation? How, how are we having whole industries of pilots flying around and no one's really catching on? I... wow, uh, okay. That's actually a good point. Yeah, I'm, I mean, here's, here's a good question. Why don't pilots catch on to this fact 
If, if the Earth was truly a sphere, 25,000 miles in circumference, curveting eight inches per mile squared, a pilot who wanted to simply maintain their altitude at a typical cruising speed of 500 miles per hour would have to constantly dip their nose downwards and descend 2,777 feet over half a mile every minute. Otherwise, without this compensation in an hour's time, the pilot would find themselves 166,666 feet, 31.5 miles higher than expected. You just end up flying off into outer space if you weren't constantly dipping your nose down to fly around the ball. I could go into a litany of perfectly reasonable responses as to how airplanes keep their altitude. And the links to those explanations are in the description below. Instead, I want to bring attention to the reference point issue we're having here. A passenger on a plane 35,000 feet in the air would not notice any downward dip in the aircraft because his reference point is the Earth. Someone on the moon, for example, would see the airplane dipping down as it flies around the Earth because the altitude at which it is flying is with reference to the Earth. Eric wants to see something that he is incapable of seeing here, as ignorance makes him conclude he is right. And so like I said, if at the typical cruising speed of most planes, you'd have to be descending a half a mile every single minute. And this never happens. I've talked to pilots. Once you get to your cruising altitude, the artificial horizon maintains level. It don't touch the controls, just keeps on going. And so, I mean, the, the reason pilots don't figure, I'm sure some pilots figure it out, and then who are they going to tell? Um, I mean, the they're just like everyone else. Everyone else is so brainwashed that of course they don't think of it. And if they do, I've even heard some explanations. They they claim that uh, you know they said the at, the atmosphere they said the Earth is spinning over a thousand miles per hour, and that the atmosphere is also dragged along with it. So then, if some pilot says, "Hey, why don't I have to course correct downwards all the time?" Their explanation is that this atmosphere that's being magically dragged with the spinning ball Earth. Remember kids, the atmosphere spinning with the Earth is the magical part here. Also magically course corrects planes so that they stay at exactly the same altitude uh, because hmm. they're in that, that atmosphere, you know, that magical atmosphere that helps you curve around the ball Earth, man. <laughs> <laughs> They've got explanations for everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those explanations are called science. <laughs>